Hey Magic fans, we're back again. Captain Clive here talking to you. We're on box number four of Keldheim. So let's crack this bad boy open and have a conversation today. So today's conversation, uh, once again, becomes from uh, more Drunken Blade. He's uh, doing a pretty good job of commenting on my videos. I appreciate him hanging out with me through all these box openings. Uh, and he had a real good question, which I, I replied to uh, very briefly in the comment section. And I kind of wanted to give a little more insight into that. And his question was, which we'll go over while we open these beautiful packs. Get this trash out the way. His question, Time Spiral. Do I buy a box of Time Spiral Remastered for cards that I already have and or do not need? And if so, why should I? It's 200 a box. I don't need the cards. I don't want the cards. Like, is there a reason for me to really buy this set? So, this is really a difficult question to answer. Because um, a lot of this question is really subjective to a lot of different things. For one, he mentioned uh, investing in the product. You know, I don't, ha I, you know, do I buy the box because I want the cards? Do I invest in the cards? Um... So with that said, when you talk about investing, uh, you don't need the cards, you don't want the cards. The thing about investing is you're putting money into a car card. <laughs> oh boy, ain't that some sweet list of card action. Um, investing means you invest money in something to get a return on it later. Um, in, uh, in all reality, inside the Magic the Gathering market, and, and I honestly most markets in general, you can look, up, look them up. A piece of sealed product is always worth more than the actual box cards uh, themselves inside the set once those packs have been opened. That's a two rare pack. That's pretty nice. So the key word here is oh, another list card. You know, nice common from uh, the old days. Nothing special. So, like, I know you guys see me opening these packs and this, that, and the other. Um... You know, but the reason that I open the boxes that I'm getting is because I want the cards to A, build my sets. Um, oh, there's our first Mythic. Pretty nice. Still rhyme. Um, I buy them not just to uh, not just to open, but to build my sets. And when I mean sets, I'm talking like I use this as an excuse to not only crack pads, crack packs, but to build play sets of four of every card. Um, because I'm a, I am a magic enthusiast, nice foil, uh, and I love playing the game. And to play the game, more often than not, you need most cards. You need to have a play set of four. So one of the things that hmm, there is a glitch in the matrix. One of the things that I found was by um, getting boxes on pre-order um, and then opening them. I could get a good chunk of my cards, especially back in the days when, you know, pre-releases were going and so forth. You know, it was real easy to hit up four or five pre-releases in a weekend and get a lot of good cards. A nice rare, a nice foil, I mean. Um, and then buy some boxes, buy a case, open it up, and fill out the rest of it. And if you want to watch my videos moving forward, I'll talk a little bit more. Oh, Herald of the Elves Foil Rare. That's pretty sweet. Let me put that right there. What I do is I open these boxes, I uh, keep up to four of any play card I get. And then once I get past four, oh, look at that. Gold Span Dragon Sign card. That's pretty sweet. Nice, nice. Anyway, so once I get to four of my play set from all these boxes and things that I open, I put those cards back in a binder like you saw uh, in my storage video. And if you haven't looked at the storage video, get a chance to go look at it. It's a pretty nice video. It talks about how I store my cards. Ooh, nice two rare pack. Um, okay. Oh, there we go. Foil Modal Land. Hinge Gate Pathway. Very nice. So that's our second foil rare. So anyway, I uh, I put the, the four of each of every card. I put them into a binder. I put them in storage. Um, and then as I go play the different formats, I just get the binders out, build the decks that I need, and move on. Um, so with that said... Uh, do I always get all the cards that I need from opening these boxes? No, obviously I do not. Um, 
But one of the things that I found, uh, if you really are a magic enthusiast and you like doing trading, you buy and you sell, uh, opening these boxes, uh, like I showed you guys earlier, going through box values and so forth, uh, sometimes, depending on the rares and the extra mythics you get, you can actually sell and or trade them off to finish off your sets. Oh, nice. Mythic number two, another Tibby. That's pretty sweet. You can sell or trade off any of the extra cards that you get to fill out your set without spending any more money. Uh, I came to this realization uh, probably a couple years ago uh, when I was buying full sets online um, of the cards. I'm talking like, you know, a full play set of four, rares, mythics, uncommons, and foils of the set for one flat price, and then that was it. What I come to realize was for the same price that I was currently paying, I could help out my local game stores and so forth, or even other places, by actually just buying the boxes and building my car, building my collection that way. Oh, nice. Full rare number three, blood in the snow, pretty sweet. And then anything that they wouldn't sell, buy or trade, I could sell, especially the good ones, I could sell on eBay for a pretty decent profit, and then reinvest my eBay money back into the cards that I need. So I'm going to have a talk about that later. Uh, but as far as investing or buying Time Spiral, so currently um, I've only, oh, wow, okay, another Mythic. Hate to, sorry to stop again, guys. Mythic number three there, that's pretty sweet. Um, the only reason that I would buy Time Spiral uh, is really to just either A, you're going to open it to try to sell cards um, and get some nice cards out and pulls out of them. Maybe you go draft a few of them or what have you. It's not a traditional set per se, so it's not like I want to get a play set of four of each. Uh, because honestly, buying the actual cards individually is sometimes cheaper and can be less of a hassle. Oh, that's a very nice Shimmer Drift fail. Um, so when you think about investing, um, depending on what else comes out about the set, uh, cracking them to sell individually, I don't think it's going to be the right move. Um, and with that said, honestly, most boxes that you get, if you want to make money opening the packs, again, is not the way to make the money. It's a two rare pack. That's pretty sweet. Um, oh, hey, look at that. That's pretty interesting. It is a, it's like an uncommon Gray Robber from the Kamigawa era. It's pretty nice. Uh, because Magic Boxes are always better as a sealed product, and depending on how you invest in them and which ones you buy, really depends on how fast that money can be uh, reclaimed or, re, uh, uh, or remade, per se. Uh, so when I buy sets like that, very similar, oh, two rare mythic or two rare pack, both uh, Sagos, that's pretty sweet. Um, when I think about, oh, look at that. Wow, Maelstorm Nexus Mythic from the list. Oh, is that Shards of Alara? Boy, that's sweet. But, uh, I mean, the real thing you got to think about is, do I have the financial stability that if I buy these boxes, that I can hold on to them? And, and the, the base gross number I've come up with is probably 10 years. Just going to be honest with you. Um... So, some boxes go up quicker than that. I mean, don't get me wrong. I'm not saying they don't. But you can never tell how good a box is or what it's going to be worth, you know, until A, it's out of allocation. B, a lot of the boxes if oh, another sign card there. That's two for this box. Pretty sweet. Uh, they're out of allocation. Um, once they're out of allocation, they're still in the market. People still have them. Stores still have them. They got to start getting rare hard to find or have something really special in them that people are wanting so people start buying them. So my guess is about 10 years. So I'll give you an example of something I invested in which um, really didn't pan out to begin with. Um, I invested uh, in Ultimate Masters. And you're probably thinking, well, Ultimate Masters is pretty sweet. And that's what I thought too. It was a, I thought it was a sweet set. I bought me a couple boxes to put back. I thought, in all actuality, like the other Master set, especially with there being box toppers for the first time, everything else that was going on, it would be a set that would really skyrocket after the allocation period was over and they quit the print run. Unfortunately, it was dead money for a long time, and it really hasn't gone up like I thought it would. I mean, yeah, it's worth more than it was when I bought it, but honestly, not a whole lot. I mean, and what little advancement it has had in uh, value... 
Um, if I sold it online, that's two rare pack. Oh, three rare pack. Uh, just a regular foil. Um, whatever money um, value it has gained above what I paid for it, I would probably lose in um, selling fees on like eBay, shipping. You know, so really I haven't made that much of a gain on it. Um, so with a 10-year rule where that comes in, um, I got some boxes of Battle for Zendikar, for example. Um, and I got them back there because I was like, wow, they reprinted fetch lanes. This is going to be a sweet set. Plus the lottery card. You know, how could this not be a good investment? So I bought those. And of course, print to oblivion, right? You hear it all the time. And it was. that During the allocation period, because of, those, because of those cards, people just cracked so many packs that the set itself was almost no had almost no value in it so the, the boxes had no value because the set wasn't worth nothing um just here recently has that value actually started to accumulate a little bit to the fact where it's probably i would say close to double my money now and that's including any kind of fees or taxation or anything i would take from actually selling on the open market you know and that battle box those battle boxes i bought you know that was easy 10 years ago so, and it's only doubled in value. So, is this one of those good sets that you might want to invest in? I'm going to say yes and no. Um, I would say yes if these are cards that you don't have and you want to hold the boxes uh, to try to sell them later. Uh, because, worst case scenario, the boxes never really go anywhere and you end up opening them because they're worth just as much as they were when you bought them. Hey, brain freeze. Look at that. That's pretty sweet. You know, one of those. Um, and then in that case, you really aren't out any money than what you paid, even though because the box value hasn't went up. Um, and since you don't have the cards, even if you open them and you don't get good pulls, there's still cards you don't have, so now you don't have to go buy those cards on the open market. Because the second part of that is, if you do have these cards, ooh, that's nice, full art, Mythic number four. We've got one of these Haunted Voyages, it seems like, in almost every box, full art. Um, if the card values do go up and you do get a chance to sell them, then if you needed any of those cards, you're going to go have to buy them, go buy them in a single basis anyway. So it's really tricky. And I can't stress enough, don't get these kind of boxes of any kind. Um, if you don't have the financial stability to know that you can hang on to these boxes for 5, 10, 20 years before you have to sell them because the odds are it's going to take up to that up to that amount of time minimum 10 years sometimes um less if you're lucky for these to actually gain a value where you'll actually be able to cash them in and make a good chunk of money but once again the boxes have to be sealed um unless there's a card inside those boxes that really drive the price up um and with time spiral being a reprint of cards that are already out there um, and most of those cards have already been reprinted in others mas and other master sets. I kind of see Time Spiral basically as like the next modern masters or master set master set in the series. And as of right now, those master sets they aren't doing very well, mainly because there's so much reprinting going on. Nice of all those cards already, and they just keep reprinting those same cards over and over, driving the price down on them. So it's going to be real hard for those cars to keep that financial value so that you want to keep buying into those sets. So I hope that kind of answers your question. Uh, we're down to four packs here while I've been rambling. Um, I know it's not a straight answer, and, and really there can't be a straight answer. It really just depends on what you got going on. Um, but I will say that any sealed box I have bought of Magic, no matter what year it was, as long as, I've, as long as you hold on to it for some amount of time, it will be worth something eventually. Uh, the, oh, look at that. Mystical Tutor. Now that's sweet. That's a real nice one. Wow. That's a nice list card. Um, for example, look at Fallen Empires. Uh, I remember Fallen Empires first came out. Eight cards a pack. The packs were like a dollar. Like the box sets of the car, the box of the cards were worth like twenty dollars forever. People couldn't get rid of them. They were so they were printed to oblivion. Nobody had them. But if you go now and you try to get a box of Fallen Empires, it's in the hundreds of dollar price range. It's crazy how much these things are. So 
Yeah, nice into the north. That's a pretty good card. So, but look how long that's took. You know, that's, uh, man, when was Fallen Empires around? Like around the 96, 98, 97 time range. It's been almost 20 years before they finally took, before they finally started taking off. So, I mean, if you got that kind of time, it's a good investment. But investing in sets like that that do lots of mass reprintings, I don't think it's the best. I think I would rather, if I wanted to tie some money up into a product, I would tie money up in a product that's new. Um, like, honestly, I would probably do more Keldheim investment into boxes for it before I would do Time Spiral, only because this is a new set with new cards. So these new cards have a less chance of being reprinted than those in the time than the time spiral set. Um, because once again, you know, Pact of Negation is in this. Pact of Negation is getting reprinted in Time Spiral again. So the only difference between this and Time Spiral is if you get it in the Time Spiral slot, it's gonna take the place of an actual rare, which means it's probably gonna be cheaper than trying to get one from the list. Um, so that's my advice, guys. Uh, if you really want to do some investing, pick a set or a card that hasn't come out yet that doesn't do a lot of reprints and has some first, um, you know, because Time Spiral is a complete reprint set. So go with a set that doesn't have a bunch of reprints in it to start with. That way that value you get will be there a lot longer. And maybe you can really take advantage of the fact that the cards are newer. And if any of them gets broken or gets broken up in price, you can really uh, capitalize on that later on. So... Last pack, guys. Let's just pay attention to this one. One rare. Two rare. The uncommon. Ah, uh, it's just a common foil. Oh! Oh, look at that! It's a Frost Titan. I'll be damned. That's two mythics in this. Wow, look at... Let me get, let me get this out here. Look at... Frost Titan. Mythic Tutor. Like... Two mythics, one rare, and the rest were uncommons. Now that is some sweet pulls from the list, guys. So with all that said, I hope that helps out a little bit. If you guys want some more advice about investing and, and card price values and things like that, uh, I'll get into that a little later. Once again, keep your eyes out for the video on how to ship your cards and make your money. Uh, when you do eBay and things like that, give you guys some ideas of what I do to kind of lower my cost. And last but not least, get out there, play you some games, play with your friends, play with your family. Give me a like, give me a subscribe, tell your friends to take a look at the channel. I could use all the help I could get, and I appreciate you guys' support. And as always, have fun, play some magic, and be kind to each other. See you guys next time.